hello. Uh, in this video about uh, WebGL in P5, I'm going to attempt to explain something <laughs> and implement something, and that is adding a texture to some geometry. So I'm kind of checking off this list. And by the way, a couple things that I've now realized I've missed is I've only shown you in terms of geometry primitives. And there are some other ways, right? In theory, I, I think this might be at the time of recording of this video a little bit buggy because I've been doing some experiments with it. There's no reason why I couldn't use begin shape and end shape to create custom geometry, right? To create my own algorithmic 3D shape in WebGL. So um, that's certainly something that should be on the horizon for P5. And in addition to that, I could also use a function called load model. So if anyone wants to make like a nice model of a train or something, send it to me. Maybe I'll make a video that loads. And, uh, and I think typically there's probably a bunch of different file formats of 3D models, but certainly one that I believe works with um, P5 as an OBJ. So if you're making a 3D model in some other 3D authoring software and you export it as an OBJ file, you could import it. So, but what I want to focus on here is texturing. And what texturing is, is instead of simply having a material, this sort of, that is just a color or, an, or a certain kind of reflective continuous surface, that you can actually take an image, something that you load, and it could be a live video, recorded video, or a static image, and wrap that image around the particular shape, whether it's a sphere, a torus, a box, a plane, et cetera. So I want to look at that texturing an image. So let's go look at how we do that. And to simplify things, um, let me actually first start off by just making a plane. So I'm actually going to make a plane. A plane is a geometry that's just a, um, a flat plane. And I can give it a width and a height. So I'm going to just say 200, 200 to make a square plane. So you can see here's my, and this is very similar to just drawing rectangle. But the fact that I'm using plane, one of the 3D geometry primitives, means I could actually texture this right now. Um, and you can see it's responding to the light. The light is still in the scene. So I'm going to leave the light in the scene for right now. I might turn, take that off. So now, I also happen to have a directory of images. I don't know. Does anybody have a favorite kitten they want to see right now? I think, I th let's just go with kitten zero. It's cute kitten zero. Okay, kitten zero <laughs> is going to be our texture. So what I'm going to add now is uh, I'm going to add preload. Preload is a function in P5 that allows you to load data assets, media assets, other things that are ready before setup and draw happen. So I'm going to make a variable called kitten. And then in, P in preload, I'm going to say kitten equals load image. And I had a directory called kittens. And I had a file called kitten.0.jpg, kitten0.jpg, and now. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to comment out the material, and I'm just going to say texture kitten. And the magic will happen. We're going to see our kitten. Oh, interesting. So the kitten is like, so interesting. Look at the image itself is responding to the light. So one thing I want to do right now, just to simplify things, because I don't want to worry too much about light, is I'm just going to create ambient white light and take out this directional light that I worked on in the previous video, just to simplify things. And so now we can see, there's our kitten. Ah, it's spinning off as like in the end of Superman 3, which is a movie that I seem to reference way too often in my videos. Um, General Zod the kitten. OK, um, so what else can we do? Let's just try some other shapes. Why not? Let's try box. Now we have, oh, and let's make the box a little smaller. Now we have that kitten image on all sides of the box. Let's try sphere. Now we have this, now here we're seeing something that's now happening. So P5 in the WebGL renderer is making a decision. It's like, well, here's an image, here's some geometry. This is my best guess as to how you intended to wrap that image around the geometry. And in this case, if I wanted to make this appear like a planetary surface, for example, I would, I would get actually a spherical a polarized image of like a texture map or something to, to, so there's a lot of work in terms of how you might want to design images that work well in certain contexts. But we can see that that just works. I'm, let's just see all the, I'm just here for all the shapes. Uh, Taurus. So you can see there's the kitten wrapped around the torus. Um, we can stop this now. So I'm going to go back to box. Oh, and you can see here, even with different dimensions, it's, it's uh, doing different things to the kitten. So I'm going to go back to box 100. And there we go. So now I want to look at 
uh, some other things. What's interesting about this is there's no reason why we can't use a video source. So if, if you look under uh, create video or create capture, let's try to use create capture. So I'm going to say in setup, I'm going to say let uh, cam for camera, cam equals create capture. I'm going to say um, 200, 200. Oh, wait, no, sorry, I don't give it a size. Video, I think that's how I do it. Create capture video. Let's just see what happens here. Okay, so we should see, oh, there I am. So this is the capture element. It's a separate DOM element that's taking the live webcam feed. You can now see my secret green screen here. I have an itch. Wait, no, like, ah, okay, wait, no, okay. <laughs> I scratched your head, I scratched your head. Okay, um, sorry, back. I forgot that I was making a video tutorial. It just went off in my own world. All right, so a couple things. One is, let me just make that a little smaller, uh, just so we can kind of see it there, but not um, have it overwhelm the screen. And then now, what I want to do is, can I make this video a texture on the box? So I don't see any reason why I couldn't just change this from kitten to cam. There I am. Oh, oh, I could do my Superman 3 thing now. You please, just humor me. Just humor me. Turn off this video, go to something else. I'm going to do this for my own personal enjoyment. <laughs> Wait. All right, never mind. Okay, moving on. So you get the idea. I can take, and by the way, if I, if I wanted this to appear less, uh, I don't know what I want this to appear like, but I can use uh, cam.hide, in which case um, I could actually only see the video texture on the box. So this is a way you can take any image, like a live video and texture, and I could change that to a sphere or a torus. Um, I do want to, again, at some point, look at how I can start to assign image textures to custom drawn shapes with begin shape and end shape. So I need to approach that in a separate video and just look at uh, loading models and custom shapes. So somebody remind me if that video doesn't exist in this playlist to do that. Otherwise, you're going to see it at some point in a, in a few videos from now. All right, so I'm back at the end of this video. I'm not sure exactly why, but two questions came up in the chat. One is, how do lights affect texture? And two, um, how, what about shadowing? So just out of curiosity, let me try putting a plane at the bottom. So what I'm going to do, just to show you a little more sort of 3D stuff, I'm going to say um, with this spinning uh, cube, I'm going to put a push before and a pop after so that the rotate does not affect anything that comes after. And then I'm going to add this plane. So we should see here, oops, <laughs> there I am, but I want that plane now to look as if it's a floor, maybe. So what I want to do is translate maybe all the way down to the bottom and then rotate. If I want to take this plane and rotate it like this to be flat, I want to say um, this is the um, x-axis. So I want to rotate x and rotate it basically 90 degrees, which is a, a half pi. Let's try that. So you can see there it is. Now I don't want, I, what I want to do also is maybe only translate it 100 down, make the plane like really, really big. And maybe I want to give that a uh, ambient material so it doesn't have a texture of white. Is that going to override the texture? Whoa, bugginess. Okay, great. So we can see now that there's like this floor. Making it white made it a little confusing, but let's, um, Let's make the background, let's make it, uh, it's fine. So what I want to do is let me try to add some light. There's an ambient white light right now. Let's take out that ambient light. And you can see the floor, it's not buggy, it just takes a little while for the video to start. The floor is now black. But it does have an ambient material of white. So let's try adding this directional light. So I, this is a directional light that I did in the previous video, which just uh, shines a light from far away at a given direction based on the mouse. Um, and I'm going to make, let's make that light white. Just to, and I, I'm going to just give it, I, I might be able to give it just 255, but I'm going to give it all three. Let's give that a look. So you can see now, look, that light is shining and it's only able to see the sides of the, the cube where the light is. And you can see there's a, there is shadowing going on 
based on the light now. The thing is, the shadowing, I, I probably have to be more thoughtful about the positioning of these objects uh, in order to get the shadowing to work in a way where I might actually see. So I'm going to leave it to you as an exercise to try seeing what you can do with point lights and ambient lights and different shapes to see if you can get shadowing. But you can see sort of the stuff that you've got to play with here. Um, and uh, um, in terms of having a light that's shining into the scene with different shapes, with different materials and different textures. Okay, thanks for watching.